we're reading Curious George. This is a collection of Curious George books, so it's six of his little books in one. These are the early reader edition. So the first one is Curious George, The Dog Show. George was going to a dog show. He had not been to a dog show before. He was very curious. The dog show was a surprise. The dogs were not doing tricks. They stood, they walked, they ran a little. That was all. George visited the dogs after the show. It was much more fun. George loved them so much that he wanted to take them home. <laughs> this story sounds familiar. So he did. <laughs> the dog owners were busy getting ribbons. They did not see George leave with their dogs. Uh-oh. I think Curious George stole some dogs. At home, George wanted to count how many new friends he had. It was hard work. The dogs did not stay in one place. George had a great idea. He put the big dogs in one room, he put the small dogs in another room, he put the hairy dogs in the bathroom, then he counted. One, two, three hairy dogs. One, two, three small dogs. One, two, three big dogs. The front door opened. It was George's best friend. The man was surprised to see dogs behind every door. There must be 20 of them, he said. But George knew better. There were three plus three plus three dogs. There were nine dogs in all. The doorbell rang. Nine dog owners had come to get their dogs. George waved goodbye nine times. What a great dog show it had been. Right in his own home. And that was Curious George the Dog Show. This one is called The Kite. It was a sunny day in the country. George opened the window to let in fresh, cool air. It was windy. George liked to watch the wind. He liked to watch the wind carry things away. It carried leaves away. It carried his cards away. It did not carry his brick away. As George looked up, he saw something colorful in the sky. It was a kite. It belonged to Bill, the boy next door. George wanted to fly the kite more than anything in the world. I bet if he asks nicely, he'll be allowed to fly the kite. Flying a kite is not easy, Bill said, but I can teach you. Just then his mom called. Billy, please come and help me. Bill gave George the kite string. Please watch my kite for me, George, he said. I will be back soon. George wanted to be good, but he was also very curious. He was curious about flying a kite. George went to a field. He held the kite up to the wind. It began to fly away. George chased the kite. He chased it over a hill and past a farm. The string pulled him along. The wind was too strong. It carried George away with the kite. Oh no. George was flying like a bird. It was so much fun. It was fun until George almost crashed into a tree. Now Jumpy the squirrel was flying too. He did not like it. Soon George was happy to see the man with the yellow hat flying nearby. The man had a yellow hang glider. He had come to take George and Jumpy home. Oh, thank goodness. George was glad to be on the ground again. He gave Bill the kite. Thanks, you're a great kite flyer, Bill said. George liked flying, but he liked walking more. <laughs> George still likes, to, likes windy days. He likes to fly kites. He likes to fly kites that are just the right size.
And that was the kite. This one is called Curious George Cleans Up. It was an exciting day. A new rug had arrived. George was curious to see if it would fit. It did. George liked it. It was the right color. It was soft to walk on. The rug was so perfect. Really tied the room together. All that walking made George thirsty. He poured himself a big glass of grape juice. Then he went back to the rug. It felt squishy between his toes. <gasps> George thought it would be fun to jump on the rug, so he jumped. George forgot about the grape juice, too. It jumped, too. What a mess. George had to get that juice off the rug. He used paper towels first. They did not work. George remembered soap was good for cleaning. If one soap was good, many soaps would be even better. Now all George needed was water. Maybe he used too much. George went to borrow a water pump from a nearby farm. It was heavy, so he had to put it on wheels, and he had to get some help towing it home. <laughs> he used the cow to tow it home. He used the pump a long time. Finally, there was more water outside than inside. When George was done, the rug was cleaner than ever. The whole room was cleaner, even if it was a little wetter. <laughs> but it took a while for everything to be perfect again. <laughs> that was Curious George Cleans Up. This next one is called Curious George Plants a Seed. Jumpy Squirrel was very busy. George was curious. What was Jumpy doing? Bill, the boy next door, told George, Jumpy buries acorns and nuts. He stores them in the ground. He can dig them up later when he is hungry. That gave George a great idea. George buried the orange juice. He buried the butter. He buried the bread. He was glad to find a good place to store food. When the man with the yellow hat came home, the kitchen was empty. Where was all the food? <laughs> George proudly showed his friend. George, orange juice and bread are not for burying, the man with the yellow hat said. They cannot be stored in the ground. His friend showed George a peanut with a sprout. George was puzzled. This peanut grew into a plant, the man said. Seeds and nuts grow out of the ground if they are not eaten first. George thought he understood. If a little peanut could be a big plant, what would a rubber band become? What would a feather become? George dug lots of holes. He buried lots of things. Soon the house was empty. The man with the yellow hat was surprised. George, umbrellas and chairs are not for burying, the man with the yellow hat explained. They are made by people. They are not gr going to grow. Seeds and nuts will grow. A few days later, George saw something new in the yard. It was a sprout. Look, George, said his friend. A seed you buried is growing. I wonder what it will be. Soon, there was a beautiful sunflower in the yard. George had a green thumb after all. <laughs> That's so cute. And Jumpy the squirrel is looking at it too. Okay, our next... Curious George story is called Roller Coaster. 
George woke his friend up early. Today was a special day. They were going to Zany Island. George was curious about riding the roller coaster. It was called the Turbo Python 3000. It looked scary and fun. Betsy and Steve have ridden it nine times. They invited George to ride with them, but there was a problem. George was too short. The man at the gate said George needed to be five candy strings tall to ride. George was only four. He could, how could George grow one candy string in a day? Maybe he could eat leaves like a giraffe. Giraffes were tall. Yuck, the leaves tasted bad. George took a bite of his candy string. Candy tastes better. What else could he do to grow? George thought exercising might help. He lifted a heavy bar. Then George measured himself. He was now four and a half candy strings tall. How's he growing? George wondered if stretching would make him grow. He tried it, but this time George was very tired. He nibbled on his candy some more. George saw a mother and baby. The mother told the baby that sleep would help him grow. So George took a nap too. When he woke, he measured again. Hooray, he was finally five candy strings tall. Hmm. But the sign said he was still too short to ride. How can that be? Have you been biting your candy strings, George? The man with the yellow hat asked. George nodded. When the candy strings were longer, it took four to measure you, the man explained. Now that the candy strings are shorter, it takes more of them to measure you. Five, but you did not grow. George was so disappointed, Captain Zany, the park owner, walked by. When he heard about George's problem, he smiled. Since monkeys don't grow very tall, we have a special sign for them. Was George tall enough now? You bet he was. Oh, he got to ride the roller coaster after all. Okay, we have one more story. It's called Curious George Takes a Trip. Winter was long, cold, and snowy in the big city. George and the man with the yellow hat were lucky. They were going on vacation. The suitcases were ready, the tickets were ready. George and his friend went to bed early. Everything was set. Except the alarm clock. George, we overslept, the man cried. George and his friend dressed. They dashed off to the airport. Hawaii, here we come, the man said. George was excited. He had never been on an airplane before. The man put the suitcases on a cart at the airport. This will make them easier to carry, he said. They rushed to check in. George climbed on top of the cart to see over the ticket counter. Here's a gift for you, the ticket clerk said. She gave George a toy plane, his first airplane. George liked the airport already. He flew his plane. It landed on a red suitcase. Bad news, the man said. Our plane is late because of a big storm. We have to sit and wait. George did not mind waiting. He had a brand new toy, but when George looked, the toy was gone. The suitcase was gone. Oh, He's sad now. Then George heard a beeping sound. A motor cart drove by. The red suitcase was on top of it. George ran after it. The suitcase went faster. George got on the moving sidewalk, but he was going the wrong way. George heard a new noise. Bags were moving on a long belt. George spotted the red suitcase. It was getting away. George followed it. He looked inside the suitcase. No toy plane here. Where should he look next? 
Hmm. Finally, the plane was ready. But where was George? I cannot board the plane, the man said. I lost my monkey. You mean George? The flight attendant asked. She pointed at the plane. George waved. He was on board already. George and the man walked to their seats. A nice woman stopped them. There you are. Did you lose this, she said. She gave George his toy plane. The airport was a fun place. There were so many different ways to get around. Maybe it was even better than vacation. <laughs> that was Curious George Early Readers Collection.